tell you, talk about precious memories that I learned lessons at that camp and certainly do have um, lingering and precious memories of the time I did spend there. On the way home, something had changed and uh, it, I'm sure, uh, helped to change my life. And I'm uh, glad to testify to that. Uh, we used to wait patiently for the, the camp to start because then there was things going on. So it was a fun time for us uh, as well as a spiritual time. Anyway, it was, um, it was wonderful and uh, I'm glad that I had the opportunity. I remember so well as a boy how the people of various denominations would come to Stistral Camp. One day she said, if I don't get to Stistral Camp, I miss a great part of the summer. Thank God for all the neighbors. I, I will always be grateful that I had the opportunity to go to camp and it was kind of neat too that my first opportunity sleeping away from home without my parents I could still see the house over the fence. <laughs> Tell you, Lillian, you don't know how much I appreciate you getting this together. This is just so good. I just appreciate it. I get embarrassed with that. And it's great to sing these oldies and the golden, these golden gospel songs. And that's what they just are to me. And brings it back to the great days of Stitzville when we were on the straw and <laughs> people got blessed ready for heaven, the joy of the Lord was in their hearts, and it was just great. Now, we are going to hear some more, little, we have more messages to come yet in the C part, or in the next part. Where the big tabernacle was, uh, just west of that on the hill, there were two cottages. One was Johnny James's, my grandfather's, and the one beside it was the Trimble Cottage. They existed there like that for a good many years. Down the hill, there is a row of at least seven cottages or so. I'm very glad that Earl is able to be with us today, and I'm going to ask him to come and speak to us uh, of his experiences with the camp, which I know were great. Blessed does so much in, in keeping us on our toes. And um, now, after singing with you, I believe I still can sing. <laughs> I'm uh, glad to uh, be singing here today. Uh, Sitzville camp meeting. Uh, there was one night when I attended there as a young boy and uh, during and after the uh, sermon I was uh, quite uh, convicted and uh, urged by a spirit that I should go to the altar uh, which I did and uh, we used to live uh, in Munster, which was a few miles from Stittsville only, and uh, we didn't uh, stay on the campground, so we drove back and forth. Anyway, that night, on the way home, everything seemed so beautiful, so beautiful. I hadn't had any... Uh, wonderful demonstration of uh, joy until that. But uh, on the way home, something had changed and uh, it, I'm sure, uh, helped to change my life. And I'm uh, glad to 
testify to that. And uh, the message of the wonderful words of life that we sing uh, will certainly get to them, I'm sure. Yes, this will camp meeting, I remember it uh, as being on Manchester Street. And uh, I remember where the uh, McCoys lived. And uh, right alongside the roads, in front of the row of cottages that uh, has been mentioned, uh, there was a bit of space. And they used to, we used to play softball there. However, because uh, we didn't live on the grounds, uh, Dad uh, kept on his work through the through the day, and we went back and forth. Anyway, I used to be glad to get there a little early before the evening service, so that I could get joining in the foot in the softball that they were playing when we would arrive there. And uh, you can tell that um, I like uh, softball or baseball now. <laughs> like this lady who keeps us coming together. And uh, welcome, Reynolds. You're way, about, way down here from home. Right here. <laughs> Thank you for coming. It's a joy to see you. And we uh, are with you in Missing Liza Jane. This is my story, this is my song. I have a little scripture reading for before each session of him sing. The first is from Psalm 66. Make a joyful noise to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. And that I think is how our singers now will be singing for joy for us. Lillian prepared our songs and hymns and and there is a theme as we go through. You'll see there is a theme of the different groupings. In the last two days, poor red cold, the tents were torn apart, the kids were all soaked, the worn boy played the trumpet for the rise yeah. in the morning, yeah. Yeah. and he played, Are We Downhearted? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> I'm Aunt Lola Willows at this time because uh, she wrote a book. And I'll explain that a little as I give this, but this memory is really because of Aunt Lola. It's Aunt Lola Willow's work. Mrs. Lola Willows and Miss Eva James teamed up as evangelists for many years. In 1957, after her sister Eva had died, Aunt Lola published a book, The Two Sisters. She began with the settlement of her great-grandfather's family who emigrated from Ireland and settled west of what became Stittsville in 1821. After a log cabin was built, George Argue sent his 13-year-old son, Andrew, around to gather in what neighbors there were then to a service to thank God for his goodness. Although 1898 is the official year of registration of the opening of the Holiness Movement camp in Stittsville, work is believed to have been started much before, in the early 90s. Country Tales, that's a book the Institute published, listed the, the men who got things started. Mr. Johnny James was head man on the committee. Then there was Andrew Scarf, Richard Fluellen, George Tennant, James Argue, Silas Argue, William Argue, Wesley Tremble. Andrew Argue's youngest child grew up to marry John Jacob James. So she was the wife of the man who was chair of the committee. So that would be like a fourth Argue's uh, 
eagerness to get the camp going. There were many tent settlements and camp meetings being carried out in those days, and there were not many accommodations. Mother would pack a basket with food, and father would hitch the horses to the Democrat, and we were all packed in. Then away we went to a meeting. When mealtime came, the planks used for seats were converted into tables. We would place two of them side by side. Over them, mother spread the tablecloth. How good the food tasted out of that basket. Hymns were sung. Then Bishop Horner would give out an invitation hymn. Hardened sinners were broken and became penitent and knelt at the feet of divine mercy. And there they found that Jesus can break every fetter and set the, set the captive soul at liberty. Now, I have a, fr a friend here who, uh, she's going to tell you a little about where she was in relation to the camp. Faith Styles from Munster. She worked with me for years in the UCW. Then we kind of dwindled out to not too many. Anyway, I, I grew up in Stittsville, as some of you know. And it's nice that, um, you know, I have this opportunity to see so many people. Um, like Doreen Bell, for instance. <laughs> she was one of my teachers when I was living in Stittsville. Uh, anyway, we lived um, on Manchester Street, just uh, sort of at the bottom of the campgrounds. I'm sure if you're familiar with the area, you know where I mean. And it was just a tiny little house there. <laughs> and uh, we used to wait patiently for the the camp to start because then there were things going on, you know, so uh, so it was a fun time for us uh, as well as a spiritual time. We had uh, we had wonderful neighbors then and I, I often think back to that and, and what has happened now, uh, I'm sure a lot of you are good neighbors, but things have changed in that aspect, I find. Um, but anyway, we uh, we did enjoy the camp a lot. My mom used to help with the cooking, and uh, and we used to go to the um, daily vacation Bible school. And um, what else can I remember? The big the big stone, of course. Mm. And um, anyway, it was um, it was wonderful, and uh, I'm glad that I had the opportunity, and I'm glad that I have the opportunity to share some of these things with you. I think we should uh, maybe recognize our instrumentalists here. They, so they have to keep changing keys. You'll see them moving little things around. So maybe we should uh, give them a little yeah. thanks. Lillian, we're glad to have a good sound man, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we are, certainly. Yeah. third and last section for speakers. Uh, I thought at this time that we would try and emphasize a bit the Maple Dean camp which came about later. Now some of you have seen this picture. I had it last year here. It's some boys at their tents where they stayed. Uh, my two boys were there for a week, I think two years. Glenda. Glenda. Uh, Doreen Bell's daughter. She, uh, she'll she tell you what she knows about the cat. Um, my name is Glenda Bell Fairbrother, and I currently live in Toronto, um, but I grew up in Stittsville, and 
I never spent very many weeks at the camp, but I can tell you, talk about precious memories, that I learned lessons at that camp and certainly do have um, lingering and precious memories of the time I did spend there. My time there would have been towards the end of the, the life of the camp. I went to daily vacation Bible school. I was very lucky growing up that I had a mother who stayed at home with me, so I didn't have the necessity of going to day camps that kids nowadays seem to have when two parents need to work. But I looked forward to that week in the summer and uh, still have a picture somewhere of me trying to walk on stilts when I was about 11 years old. And that was one of my adventures at the camp. Mm -hmm. I also benefited from the camp in, by the use of their swimming pool. And that's where I did all of my swimming lessons growing up. Um, often early in the morning before most of the campers would want to be up. And it was pretty cold some days. Um, but I did uh, get a lot of my uh, Red Cross swimming badges back at the camp. Uh, I did actually get to stay one week at overnight camp, and that was the only opportunity I had in my life to go to such a camp. I make great efforts every summer to make sure that my son, who is now 11, goes to a camp in Muskoka every summer because I just think it's a really great opportunity to grow up and to celebrate nature. And I was laughing this morning remembering back. Mom said, oh, I don't remember very much about you going to that camp, but I have vivid memories of having what amounted to an allowance, a little account set up at the tuck shop. And that was a big event every day was going to the tuck shop for our, our treats. And we could actually have candy every day. Um, and uh, bunking in one of the tiny little rooms in a row of rooms um, with a group of other girls. And my sister and I stayed in the one room. And that, as I recall it, it had a double bed that took up the width of the room and then there was a little chest of drawers set this way so that when you came in the door, it was the width of that chest of drawers to the bed. And that was how big the room was. Um, I also recall um, attending service three times a day back then, having some great meals. That was when uh, there was a new tabernacle. But I remember singing lots and lots of these songs just in the old um, place where we did all our arts and crafts with the... Um, old corrugated roof that made lots of noise when it rained. Um, yeah, right. Mom still has uh, a trivet that I made back at that camp, and it comes out when we have Christmas or Thanksgiving dinners for one of the hot casserole dishes to sit on. And I wish I remembered all of the Bible verses that I memorized uh, during those few weeks at camp. So this would be over 40 years ago that I'm talking about, and I know that some of your memories go back much further than that. I wasn't able to come last summer, but I've heard lots of stories about what a great event it was, and I really do appreciate everything you've done in keeping these memories alive. Uh, it's really important. I looked at the song sheet after last year and didn't think I remembered any of the songs, but sitting here this morning, particularly with such... Um, a vivid memory and a strong uh, male voice sitting beside me, uh, the songs come back to you. Um, apart from the old rugged cross, which frankly makes me cry, um, most of the songs are not only um, easy to sing and easy melodies to keep, but they're really easy to remember and they're so uplifting. And they've stayed with us for decades. And I think it's um, really unfortunate that we don't get the opportunity to sing them more often. It has been my privilege to um, have been here this morning. Keep up the good work. Thank you for what you do. And um, thank you all for sharing your memories with me. And um, I, I will always be grateful that I had the opportunity to go to camp. And it was kind of neat, too, that my first opportunity sleeping away from home without my parents, I could still see the house over the fence. <laughs> from last year that John Demer, Demers wrote. He did do a good account. I had marked parts in it, but maybe you'll find your book you got last year and you can read about it. 
I sometimes get a little credit for this and even for the plaque. But as I say, it was Reynolds that instigated me. I'd never done it unless he expressed his concern. He and I walked through the bush one time some years ago and we scraped off and we got some clear cement. He says, it's a shame there's no marker for this. Could we scrape off some of the cement and maybe just print something on it? And I said, oh well, the little leaves will only cover it up. Then we thought, could we hire a carpenter to hire a big uh, little wood sign post in the ground, print something on it? Well, you know, then some young fellows being kind of spry, you know, vandalism, wouldn't last long. So anyway, time got on until we got the Historical Society going, and we do have a plaque, a good, a beautiful memorial for the camp. He's going to put a benediction on for us now. I thought after, what a fellowship leaning on the everlasting arms. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Uh, That's a good song. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just on the Lord has something to say. Was that your grandson who sang that benediction? That, that's right. That's Keith's son, my grandson, Aaron Hobbs. He, he's really a good singer. Thank you. And I'm just so delighted to be here. We're so glad to see there's 30 some of us here. That's great. Anyway, thanks again, Lynn. And thanks to all these people leading the singing. It's just great. God bless you abundantly. Amen. Thank you, Reynolds. Thank you for joining together. Anyway, Jesus said he'd be together with you if there's two or three. Well, we have a few. We have a nice little group. Weathermen maybe reduce the number a little bit. But anyway, it's just if we can join the fellowship of praising God, especially in beautiful hymns. And now we're going to get ready to go for our lunch right here of course and uh, so I think we'll sing our table grace together just while we're like this and Ruth will get us going on the right key. Praise God from I'm just so thankful for the Tremble family, the Argue family, the Manchesters, and my Grandpa James. Mm -hmm. They were the four great warriors foundation. There are others that I can't just think of just now. Thank God for each one of you. Mm -hmm.